Welcome to the Pitch Vision Academy Cricket Show, your guide to better cricket. Wherever you are, whoever you are, we're here to help you out for a little while, chat about cricket for a little while, and uh, hopefully leave things a little bit better than when we started. Who are we? Well, my name is David Hinchliffe. I look after things here, and helping me to help you are two very fine cricket coaches. The first is the director of cricket at Millfield School. It's Mark Garraway. Hello, Garris. How are you? You okay? Very good, thanks. Sun's shining and um, birds are singing and cricket's being played and uh, it's all, it, all is good in the world when that's happening. Yeah, it always is, mate. It always is. We're not quite so sunny, but I think we're going to be this afternoon. So lots of games on. Uh, looking forward to it. There you go. Best weather always up north. So let's have a little chat about cricket, our little introductory chat, and um, that for me this week is um, in-season. In-season training, always an interesting one for me. There are traditional things that you talk about doing in-season when it comes to cricket, and there's things that you talk about that maybe you want to avoid. Um, so I was tr- thinking about that this week, obviously with um, with uh, the cricket season starting for me, and so I wanted to get you guys' opinions on it. What do you do in-season that maybe you do less of out of season, and what do you do... What do you avoid in season that that maybe you concentrate on uh, when there's no cricket around? Certainly from my perspective, uh, you just become incredibly uh, game focused because the great thing about match play is that it it exposes us, doesn't it? And also it rewards us. Um, Whereas that isn't always so evident within a uh, a net situation or a practice situation in the winter. That ultimate consequence or success doesn't doesn't quite happen. So it may, this allows us to be really specific in our feedback, our conversations, our interventions, and our sessions that we run with our with our players and squads. And um, it's it's a fantastic time of year. I think I, I thoroughly love in season coaching because uh, once you get your head around the fact that if you make sure that you word your interventions properly, that actually you can't really do too much harm if you're considered. Um, I, I really enjoy it and some of the conversations we're having with our players at the moment uh, have, have been uh, very good which have reaped some fantastic um, uh, early season results uh, and uh, yeah uh, it, it's a good time of year I thoroughly enjoy coaching within a games uh, a games part of the year uh, even more so than I do in that development phase in the winter is that because, Gareth, there's a direct, you know, you see directly what has happened and then you can work on something very specific to do with that and then you can immediately see the results of that by having another game? Yeah, I mean, they, they rush on. I, mean, I, look, I look at the 15s team that I'm overseeing at the moment. We've got six games in the space of eight days and what that allows me to do is to change the opportunity that each of the players is getting over the course of those uh, six games that we have so different people are bowling in different orders and uh, different people are batting in different orders and obviously I'm having to look after the fast bowlers in different ways to make sure that they're not over bowling and being put under undue stress which creates opportunity so as a result you know the kids are getting their own feedback directly from their results in matches and their personal performance in matches and uh, and equally it's given us coaches the opportunity to make some real subtle interventions and things like field settings and things like how you watch off the pitch and things like how you support each other you can't get into those types of conversations in the winter with any sort of tangible uh, connection really and um, for us to be able to do that now at this stage of the year when we're in season is just magnificent and and to me you see people grow as uh, as people and as teammates as a result of this side of the year much more than you do in the winter where it's far more individual based Gareth mentioned you mentioned um language and the way that you present something and um uh, making sure that you do no harm i suppose and and there is that there is that fear in a lot of cricketers of oh no if i do some if i do something different now I'll, it'll mess up my whole game so uh, can you give me a, a sort of maybe an example of how you would adjust your language between um off season and in season coaching well i think i think you've got the opportunity to look at, at things with some statistics that sit underneath it whereas we don't always have the opportunity in, in the winter um so an example of that working with a, a young player this morning he's worked really 
hard on trying to develop some sweep options, but his decision making as to when to go to those options has probably been, you know, a bit flawed in the early part of the year. Um, so uh, we had a session this morning where I asked him, you know, how many how many sweep shots he played so far this year, and we know because we've watched him that he's got out three times sweeping. So he's probably he's, he said, I think I've played 15 sweeps and I've been dismissed three times. And I said, okay, from a strike rate point of view, you know, what do you think? Uh, around that and he said well you know I've, I've probably chosen the wrong balls to to, to play uh, with the sweep shot and uh, I've gone to that sweep shot a little bit too early I said okay and what, and what do you think you're averaging with your sweep shot at the moment uh, and he said well I know exactly what I'm averaging with my sweep shot at the moment you know I, I'm averaging uh, 11 with my sweep and I said and, and so if your batting average is 11 would you try and do something about your batting and he said well of course I would because I'm a I'm a you know a middle order batter and I said well at the moment you know you go into your sweep too much so you've got two options really one you keep practicing your sweep and you keep doing it and you hopefully through practice your sweep goes up or we look to explore some other options that you can play to the same to the same ball because you have got them it's just that you've probably got a little bit one tracked in terms of your 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 sweep now so he said no that's fair enough you know I want to have more options when I'm playing uh, out in the middle uh, and so we had a session where he could do anything that he wanted to apart from sweep um, and then at the end of a session for the last uh, three or four minutes, we said, right, you can do whatever you want to do, which includes a sweep at any time that you think that that is, uh, that is appropriate, and, um, uh, and away you go. Now, you can't always have those conversations in uh, the off-season because, it, you know, from his point of view, if he hits, hits a few really well or he top edges one, there might not be a fielder there, but um, we know from this year that there has been a fielder there, and that's why he's averaging 11 with a sweep. So that, that sort of tangible thing that match play gives us allows us to have those types of conversations which could be quite hard hitting but if you talk about it in those ways and you open it up in those ways then you often find that the player wants to wants to work at it and doesn't see it as a disaster actually just sees it as an enhancement and it'll be interesting to see how he goes he's got four games in the next six days so it'll be interesting how he goes when he plays spin whether he chooses his sweep more uh, intelligently whether he accesses some of the other shots that he's reconnected with because he's always Adam. He just got a bit sweep, uh, sweep tastic, as I call it. Um, and um, you know, it'll be fascinating to see how he goes over the next little bit. But we're, without competition, you can't have that type of conversation. I don't think, or at least it's more difficult for the player to connect to. Right, let's answer a couple of questions now that have been sent in by listeners to the show or maybe readers to the Pitch Vision website over at pitchvision.com. And um, the, ha- the way that this works is that we do our best to answer the questions and then we pick the winner, the best question of the week, which is the prize, which is the online coaching course from Pitch Vision Academy at pitchvision.com. And uh, for future shows, you can send in your questions to us by emailing coach at pitchvision.com. And Roy's the first person to have sent in his question this week. And Roy says, um, how do I watch the ball from the bowler's hand? It's um, That's a, a, a very interesting question, actually, isn't it? You know, how, how do you do that? That's, you know, I, we could probably talk about that for hours, but uh, let, let's see if we can summarise. It's a great question. And, um, uh, well, I was always told you had to watch the ball hard. And you had to look at the stare at the ball. But also, I think, you know, that's something that I found that I did probably towards the front end of my innings more so than I did at the back end of my innings. You know, where, where I sort of, I wouldn't say I zoned out, but I was less attentive to what was happening, um, you know, out of the bowler's hand than I would have been uh, at the beginning. And I suppose that comes down to the fact that we start going into our subconscious mind once we've been batting for a while and once we've played for a while and we're, uh, we've adjusted the conditions of bowler and all of the other things that uh, impact upon us as batters in a game, a game of cricket. But latterly, we, we also know that people have a preference for how they watch uh, watch the ball as well. So, uh, and I'll give you two examples, two guys that I've 
shared a bit of time with in changing rooms, uh, one being Kevin Peterson, who would pick out finite detail. He would pick out scene positions. He would pick out strands on the scene. He would pick out very small things when he's watching the ball and really narrow in, which is very consistent with some of that coaching chat that we often hear around cricketers. So that worked brilliantly for him. And he picked up great bits of information ahead of making his decisions about picking the ball out of a hand and picking which way it was going to swing and also picking that initial ball flight by narrowing in his his focus. But he did that very, very naturally. And then equally, his now mate, who wasn't a mate a few years ago, Mr. Graham Smith, um, who captained his country a hundred times and scored double hundreds in international cricket, would not stare intently at the ball. Would actually, in the main, he would, uh, when he was playing well in particular, he would just sort of zone out and, and have a little bit more of a broader focus with the way that he, he would bat. So he didn't used to pick up on what angle the scene was on. He used to trust himself to uh, pick up other bits of information. For example, uh, pick up information around if somebody's doing something subconsciously in their bowling action, which gives a bit of a clue away around um, uh, bowling and bounce. So Andrew Strauss was somebody who didn't used to really stare intently at the ball. So the bottom line is that he each person's got a preference. We talk about preference a lot. And, and as I say to everybody in the nets, have a go at both and find out which one feels most natural, which one gives you the best results and have the flexibility to shift between both. Because at certain stages, when you're facing, for example, a mirror and you don't quite know which way the ball is going to go, you might need to stare a little bit more intently at the ball to try and get that early cue. Or you might need to broaden out a bit and see if he does something with his action or his fingers that allows him to get the ball to spin a different way. But if we train both ways, then we have the capacity to shift. Uh, but ultimately, we're, we're more aware now that everybody has a preference. Mine now would have been to look more intently at the ball and that's what I do now if I ever have a net or if I ever play in a game and I wouldn't say it works because I'm old and useless um, but I think if I'd have practiced that at a younger age I think I, it would have helped me as a cricketer Next question is from Karthik and Karthik says I'm from India and I'm a left arm medium fast bowler and I've been bowling for two years since I wasn't getting any, any pace from my action I tried the bowling action of Mohamed Amir and I got some success as well. Then I stopped bowling for a couple of months, and now I can't bowl good balls. Most of them are short, or half volleys, or full tosses. Now I'm confused as to whether I should bowl my natural action, or copy and learn from Amir. Yes, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Have you ever been videoed? I, I'm, this is a question to you two. Have you ever been videoed trying to do somebody else's bowling action? Um, because whilst it feels to us like we're trying to bowl like someone else, there is heck of a lot of correlation between your normal bowling action and what you end up trying to do. So I spent the whole of my junior days in the nets trying to mimic whoever the best fast bowler was that was playing against England at the time. Because in the 1980s, the only television, the only cricket on television was during the summer, wasn't it? It was during the, the Test Series and we would have, uh, you know, the Australians over or the West Indians over. And so if the West Indies were over, I'd try and mimic Malcolm Marshall. I'd come in on an angled, I'd an angled uh, uh, run up and, and I would do my best Malcolm Marshall impression. Um, but I should imagine knowing now when I try and do it, that it would look pretty similar to what I do, just on a different, slightly more angled run up. Uh, equally, I used to do the same with Jeff Lawson. So Jeff Lawson was my favourite Australian uh, bowler in 1985 and around the early 1980s. He was fantastic. He used to run in, he used to give it everything. I used to love the way that his back foot would drag, um, his back toe would drag along the floor, and I'd try and mimic that. And ultimately, uh, it looked nothing different. No one makes used to say, actually, that's just you. Um, off a slightly different, longer run up with a bit more angle. Um, so my question would be, how much do you actually shift when you go to uh, the Muhammad Amir? Test it. You know, as with everything, let's test it. Let's see 
Bowl with your normal action. Bowl with your Mohammed Amir action. Prove to yourself on video if, if it's different or the same or whatever. Only that will tell you. Um, if there is no correlation with Mohammed Amir, as you see it on the screen, um, then ultimately you've got to put that sort of distraction because that's what it is. Which one do I go to uh, behind you? If there is something in there and you enjoy the Amir one, then stick with it. Um, but, uh, you know, to me, every time I do this, and, and we do lots of tests here we around... Um, sorry, what are you after, Tommy? Balls. Those guys are warm-up balls. For warm-up balls? Yeah. Sorry. I, um, they're in the cricket bag. Everything's in the cricket bag waiting for them to do something with it. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, is that the, there's a your bowling action is your bowling action as a general rule, and, and even when we say to people we want you to lower your bowling action and try and bowl like Milinga, they're actually their arm drops about two degrees as opposed to around the corner like we uh, we see Milinga doing. So, um, you know, I, I'd lose that distraction straight away, but you have to prove that to yourself by by watching it on video and, and working that out for yourself. And that is just about all we've got time for on the show this week. We're going to head off. But before we do that, there's one more thing that we need to do. And that is to decide on the winner of the competition. So Roy had his question about watching the ball. And Karthik had his question about changing his bowling action. Which one did you prefer this week to win the prize, Garris? I'm going to go with Roy's this one. I thought that's a great question. And, you know, it, it sounds like such a simple question. But actually, when you get into it, it's not as simple as that. Because if it was then uh, we'd all be playing absolutely legendary and averaging 50, wouldn't we? Um, uh, and the fact is the game would be incredibly dull as a result. So I hope that some of that advice and testing out both methods of doing it uh, does allow you to get your average up a little bit. Let us know. Let us know. Congratulations. And uh, you will get that online coaching course. And now, Gareth, if someone else wanted to win that prize, get their question answered, how could they send the question into the show and then um, hopefully we can help them out. Uh, they could give us a call on 0203 239 7543 or drop us an email on coach at pitchvision.com. That's correct. Social media is also an option. You can message us through pitchvision.com messaging system there, social media system. Go and have a little look at that. Or you can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash pitchvisionacademy and Twitter at pitchvisionacad. If you want to listen to this show every week, you can subscribe. It costs nothing. Do a search for Pitch Vision Academy in your favourite podcast app. You can find us in there. Tap on subscribe. And uh, if you want to stream the show from the web or download old shows, look at old show notes, or just catch up on the general cricket coaching chat that's going on, head over to pitchvision.com slash academy and click on the podcast link for all the details on how to do any of that. That's all for this week. We hope you listen next week. But until then, have a good week. Cheers, Garris. Cheers, fellas.